So do parents need an account username and password? If you are a dependent student, then your parent will need an account username and password in order to sign the FAFSA. Um, so there are special cases where if you're an independent student for some reason, then your parent will not need to fill out the FAFSA themselves. But for most cases, you're going to be a dependent student until you're 24 um, and your parents will need to fill out the FAFSA, in which case they will need an FSA ID. Um, if you're not sure if you're considered a dependent student, there is a site you can go to and that's studentaid.gov slash dependency to find out and it'll just ask you yes, no questions until you figure out whether or not you are an independent or a dependent student. Um, other things that are really important to know is that you and your parent must have different account usernames and passwords, aka FSA IDs. Um, you must create different usernames because a username can only be associated with one social security number. Um, and both you and your parent will have different social security numbers that need to be associated with your FAFSA. So you must have different usernames, different passwords. Um, it is going to be your electronic signature instead of just signing where sometimes it'll auto sign with your first name and last name, you will be signing with your FSA ID, so your username and password, um, and so you will need to own it. Um, your parent also must create their own username and password, so keep in mind that that needs to be different for both the parent and the student. You should also each use your own email address and mobile phone number when creating an account. Do not share an email address or mobile phone number. Um, it's going to be associated with one account, username and password, and it will actually be a way you can access your account. Um, so basically, if you need to access your account and you don't remember what your actual username is, you can use your mobile phone number or email address to access it. So it's important that that is separate and that you each have your own phone number and email address. Um, if you don't have a phone number that you want to put in, you can put an email address. Just make sure that they are separate from the parent and student. All right, so let's get into how we're going to create our username and password. Again, there is a link in the chat to get you right there to the FSA ID. I'm going to let somebody in, so I'll point out which link that is. That link is going to be... Um, I don't see it, so I'm gonna repost it here. This link here that I just put. Oh, I see why I don't see it. All right, everyone should see that. studentaid.gov slash FSA ID create account launch. Can you say that again, what, exactly what that is? Yeah, you want me to read out the whole thing? Are you the one that's on the phone? Yes, I am. Thanks, I'd okay. appreciate it. I'm going to give you an easier one then. The one that I gave them will take them directly to the FSA ID. Yours, I'm going to take you, you're just going to have one extra step. So I'm just going to send you to studentaid.gov. And I will explain how that works in a second. So Thank for those you. of you who didn't click the direct link, studentaid.gov will take you to where you will actually file your FAFSA. However, today we're just doing the FSA portion. So it's just the very first few steps. So you're going to go to that studentaid.gov or the link and click create an account. And then on that page, you're going to the next page. Once you've said create an account, you're going to go right to your FSA ID you're going to click get started. All 
Okay. So the next thing you're going to do is provide your social security number, date of birth, and name. Um, it does ask for a middle initial as well for the name. So it'll be your first name, middle initial, and last name, date of birth, and social security number. Do make sure that your name and information match what is on your social security cards. So if you are a parent and you have a married name, but it hasn't changed to what's on your social security card, make sure that you are doing whatever's on your social security card or you will get held up later. For kids, um, I don't think there should be any issues unless you were recently adopted, then just make sure that um, everything is the same as what's on your social security card. Okay, next you're going to create your account username and password. So it's really important for your username not to include personal information such as your date of birth or your name. So my name is Elizabeth. I wanna make sure that my name is not part of the username. Um, ironically, the example here, they actually put in Jane Doe as if that was someone's name. Don't do that. <laughs> Um, we want to try to keep it impersonal. So um, I used my dog's name. Um, so you can do something like that. And so it's still something that you can remember, but just make sure that you're not using your date of birth or your name. If you see the message, the username you entered is already in use, then someone has already used that username. You can try adding numbers to it or else just try to come up with a different username. Um, the password is pretty typical. Password must be between eight and 30 characters in length and must contain at least one uppercase letter, one lowercase letter, and one number. Um, that password will be case sensitive. And I am going to give, since we do have some students who are actually doing this with us, I'm gonna give them a second to come up with their username and password um, before we move on. On this page, they're also going to be, you're also going to be putting in your email address and you're going to be asking it to confirm your email address. Okay, the next step is going to be to provide your contact information. So this will be where you put your mobile phone number uh, for recovery. You already put your email in the last one. So this one will be um, putting your, your actual physical home address um, and then putting your phone number for account recovery. Make sure the information is correct. Any errors will result in delays um, and can result in delays receiving your actual financial aid. So make sure that everything is accurate and there's no typos. Okay, the next step is going to be selecting communication preferences. Um, FSA will send communication. Um, sometimes it's going to be based on programs that their students are eligible for. Um, so it's a good thing to actually get some information from them. They're not going to spam you, but they can send good information on programs. Um, so you need to decide whether or not to get information by email or by postal mail. Um, they will send it either way, but we do recommend sending it by email. Your next thing is going to be selecting challenge questions and answers. These will be used to unlock your account um, and retrieve username and password. So basically for account recovery. Um, your answer is not case sensitive, which is really good. Um, certain questions will be something like, what was the name of your elementary school teacher? Uh, what was the name of the street you grew up on? What was your mother's maiden name? All of those pretty typical account recovery questions. Um, and there are four different challenge questions. Again, I am going to give a brief pause here so our high school students can make sure that they're on track and they're, that we're caught up and everybody's in the same place here. Does anybody have any questions yet? Um, 
Um, as far as if it matters which parent creates the ID, it's going to be the same person who's going to be filing the FAFSA. Um, that is dependent on your taxes. So if you um, both file your taxes, then you're both going to create an FSA ID. If you file jointly, then it's going to just be one person. And if you um, file, like if you live together, but you both, um, sorry, there's different ways to explain it. Um, I actually have this lovely little step-by-step So it kind of takes you here. I'll put this in the chat too. It'll tell you who's going to be creating their FSD, FSA ID. Um, it starts with, are you married to each other? If yes, report information for both parents. If no, um, then you answer question two. If they're not married, but you live together, then yes, report information for both parents. If no, you go to the next one, which is, do you live with one parent more than the other over the last 12 months? you're going to report the FAFSA of the parent you lived with more. Um, if this parent is remarried, then you need to report the information for the step parent on the FAFSA. Um, if no, then you report for the parent who provided more financial support over the past 12 months or in the last year that you received support. Um, and then again, that parent if that provided more support, if they were remarried, then you need to provide that information on the step parent too. So hopefully that kind of helps answer that question a little bit. I'm going to put that link in our chat as well. Let me go back to our PowerPoint here. Okay, moving on to the next thing. Um, we are going to review and agree to the terms. So you're going to go through and make sure all of your information is correct. There's no typos or anything like that. If you do need to make a correction, you can hit the edit buttons over on the side and you will be able to edit your information. So you make sure that is correct. When that is done, you're going to review and agree to FSA's terms and conditions. And from there, you only have one more step. The final step is going to be to verify your contact information. Only a verified email address or verified mobile phone number is required. So one or the other. Um, but if you provided both on the previous screens, then you have to verify both on this account recovery page. So if you provided your mobile phone number and email and you didn't just do one or the other, then you will need to verify both. Um, you're going to select the verify by mobile phone number button to verify mobile phone number, select the verify by email address to verify your email address. Pretty straightforward there. To verify your mobile phone number, um, you will be sent a six digit text message with a numerical code. You will enter that code right um, in the box that it asks for the code um, and then select continue and then that will be verified. Um, once that phone number is verified, you can use it to log in, unlock your account, retrieve your username, or reset your password. Um, it's really important to know that you cannot continue on doing your FAFSA or anything else until you have verified your information. So it's really important to just get it done. Now um, you will not be able to continue until you have verified it. Um, verifying your email address is the exact same as verifying your text uh, or verifying your phone through text. It's going to send you a six digit numerical code to your email. You will enter it in the box where it asks and then select continue. And then again, you will be able to use your email to unlock your account, retrieve your username or reset your password. And that is it. Your account will be created. Um, you will immediately be able to use your account username and password to sign in um, and sign an original FAFSA form, which is you all, um, if you're first time FAFSA filler outers. Um, your information will be sent to the Social Security.
process or direct consolidation loan application, none of which really apply to you as first timers, so you should be okay. Um, it's also important to note, again, like I said at the beginning, in case some of you weren't here yet, we are filling out F FSA IDs today, um, and that is to prepare you for filling out your FAFSA, but you will not be able to actually fill out the FAFSA until October 1st when it opens up. If you go in to fill out FAFSA now, it will um, not be there yet. So we're just prepping you in advance. So it's one last step you have to do when you go to fill out your FAFSA. All right. Um, you will receive an email uh, informing you of the results of the Social Security Administration review. If you didn't provide an email, um, you can check your status on the personal information page at studentaid.gov. And this will be what it looks like for those of you who can see my screen. So where can you use your account username and password? It's a little bit different for students and parents here. So you can use it at studentaid.gov, mystudentaid app, or fafsa.gov. Um, and what you can do with it. You can complete entrance counseling, the financial awareness counseling tool or exit counseling. That's all going to be for loans and grants. Um, you can use it to electronically sign a master promissory note. You can sign the agreement to service for the teacher education assistance for college and higher education grant program. So anybody who wants to become a teacher, that is going to be an option for them. And then parents, this is where you come in. Um, you can complete the PLUS loan requests, which is going to be for a parent PLUS loan. If you are going to be helping with that, that will be where you are going to be doing that. You can use it to estimate your student loan payments using the loan simulator. Apply for income-driven repayment plans once you have graduated or a consolidation loan. Uh, view a history of any federal student aid that you have received and look up your loan servicer's contact information. Um, you also obviously are going to be using your FSA ID to sign for yours and the student's FAFSA form. So both parents and students will be signing your FAFSA form with the FSA ID. Um, and then in future years, you have to fill out a FAFSA every year you're in college. So it'll be used to fill out the FAFSA renewal as well. Um, it's also, um, you can use the FSA ID to manage your FSA ID. So if you needed to change something, you use your ID that you have currently to go in and change it. Um, and view your student aid history using the federal loan service. Studentaid.gov website. Um, you will be able to log into your account using a verified email address or phone number instead of your username. So um, the only way you'd forget your username is if um, for some reason you weren't able to use your email or mobile phone number. If that is the case, though, you can retrieve your username by having a secure code emailed or texted to you um, or through answering your challenge questions that you created. Uh, if you're doing challenge questions, it will also ask you for your social security number, last name, and date of birth. If you select an email secure code after you populate the verified email address and date of birth, an email will be sent to your account and you'll be taken to a secure code sent um, section. Uh, you will enter the code in the secure code box below. Um, it is the same as if you were verifying your ID. You would just take that code, put it, enter it in and hit continue and you will be set. It will provide your username for you. Um, texting works the same way. It'll send you a secure six digit code. Um, you'll put it in the box and they will find your username for you. Um, retrieving using challenge questions. Um, basically you have to put in social security in your birthday and a full um, uh, and your last name as well, and then select the continue button. Then you will answer your challenge questions and you'll be taken to a page that displays your username. Forgetting your password works the same way. Um, you're more likely to forget your password than username just because you can use your email or mobile phone number as well as your uh, in place of your username. 
Uh, so if you forget your password, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to reset it by providing your username, verified email address, and then your phone number um, as long as the month and date of your birth. Um, it will work the same way to reset your password as it would to reset your username. You can have a secure code emailed to you or texted to you or answer your challenge questions. Uh, it is important to know though, if you choose to use the challenge questions for security purposes, it will have a 30 minute delay before you can log into your account. Um, once you have done all of those former steps I just talked about, it will give you the opportunity to create a new password. So it won't send your password to you, you'll just create a new password. Um, be sure your password doesn't include your name, date of birth, or social security number. Um, the same thing works if you are locked out of your account. For Typically that's for trying your password too many times and not having it be successful. You can get locked out. If that is the situation, to your mobile phone or email or you answer your challenge questions you will be taken to your screen to change your password and then you will be able to log in again additional details um, will be under the managing your account section at studentaid.gov that is all that i have for powerpoint does anybody have any other questions for me Okay, wonderful. Um, students, were you able to get your FSA ID created? All right, awesome. Good to hear that. Yay, wonderful. Okay, that's great. I'm glad you were able to get that created. Um, one last reminder that the FAFSA does open on October 1st. So now you'll be able to go in and fill out that FAFSA and you won't have to worry about creating your FSA ID. And if between now and then you forget your username, now you know how to go ahead and recover that. <laughs> that is all I have for you then, as long as everybody was able to get in and have their questions answered. Otherwise, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day.